The verb in that Arabic is ratak, ratak. And ratak means to be brought together, to be brought as one body. And then Allah uses the verb in the Arabic which is fetaka. Fetaka means to split apart or to break apart. So here we see that these verbs that are used in the Arabic language firstly show that this universe was together as one unified piece and then it was split apart and shot into different directions or like this. Now scientists call this a cosmic egg. They call it the cosmic egg. It was once one whole thing and then it was split uh, into many pieces. But this theory of, to, to them of, of, of the Big Bang is new. The Qur'an had already established this before they were able to look and, and with these telescopes and the likes of these matters to find this. Another proof of the truth of the Qur'an is where Allah says in the Qur'an, it is we who have built the universe with our power and verily we are, though, we are, we are expanding it. We are ever expanding it. So the universe is, is expanding. As we speak, it is expanding. It started, as we said, from that one piece and it was broken apart and it's expanding as we speak. Well, it was in 1920, or in the late 1920s, I should say, that they had the Hubble. Have you ever heard of the Hubble telescope? Where they started to look into the outer space and they started to see that the universe, they believed it was expanding. That there were certain proofs that the universe was expanding. But we say over 1400 years ago, not 1920, over 1400 years ago, our creator wrote or or mentioned in the Quran that the heavens and the earth were expanding, that the universe was expanding. So this was already established in Islam before the scientists had any telescopes. Now something that should be mentioned is that Prophet Muhammad that we'll discuss in a moment, Prophet Muhammad, who Allah revealed this revelation to and brought it to mankind, he was an an illiterate prophet. He was illiterate. He could not read and he could not write. The fact that he was able to bring the likes of these matters, the likes of these matters from his creator, with such detail and understanding of the universe, even non-Muslim scholars have to admit, they have to admit that Prophet Muhammad could not have gotten this from himself. And the knowledge of these matters weren't known during that time, scientifically as they say. So this is more proof, more established proof that that which he came with was revelation from the creator of the heavens and the earth. And continuing after that, I want to mention something of the, what Allah mentions about the creation of the earth. After mentioning the creation of the universe, mentioning something of the creation of the earth. Allah says in the Quran, are you more difficult to create than the heavens and the earth that he constructed? He raised his heights high and made it level. He darkened its night and brought forth its morning. And after that he smoothed out the earth or laid out the earth and brought from it water and its pastures and fixed the mountains firm for you and gave you livestock to enjoy. So let us examine this verse as the scholars have mentioned. Firstly, many of us are so marveled at the human body. We're mar- and we should be marveled at it because it is a marvelous creation, right? But Allah is challenging us to look and say, are you more difficult to create than the heavens and the earth? Think about this for a second. Look at the sun. And, 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 and think about it, it, it it's, it's, yani, it's, it's, it's methods or the way that it, that, that it burns gases and the likes of this and it heats and lights the earth. Think about the stars and think about the seas and all of the creatures that are found in the seas. Think about this whole creation and ask yourself, is that more magnificent or more difficult to create than the human being? So how can you deny that your Lord created you when he created that which was more marvelous than you? And then it mentions, or Allah mentions that he laid out the earth, as we said, as a smooth pasture. And he gave us water. And in another verse that we mentioned earlier, he created every living thing from water. Now again, in the 19th century, scientists are saying that the human being is made up of 85, 90% water. This was already mentioned in the Quran. This was already mentioned in the book that we're quoting from. Allah says we created every living thing from water. It was already mentioned. So this is not something new to the Muslim. This is something the Muslim understood over 1400 years ago, of which scientists are now just mentioning to the people. And then we mention, again from the creation of the earth, Allah says, It is he who sends down water from the sky. From it you drink, and from it comes the shrubs among which you graze your herds. And by it he made crops grow for you, and olives, and dates, and grapes, and fruit of every kind. There is certainly a sign in that for people who reflect. Again, Allah is commanding you to reflect. Allah in the Quran again, our Lord is commanding us to reflect, to reason. Look at the universe. Think about it. Take time to pay attention to it. 
And then Allah said that he sent down water from the sky. Now, some people, when they get into this argument about where rain comes from, they give you the the whole scientific breakdown. They say the water evaporates and it condenses and then it breaks off and then it comes down as water drops. This has all been explained in the Qur'an. All of this over 1400 years, again before scientists had knowledge of these matters, it was explained. Allah said that he sent the winds. He sent the winds bringing forth the water, meaning the water evaporated. The scholars have mentioned the evaporation of the water from these pools. And he brought forth the winds to, to, to drive the clouds. And as the clouds condensed, the clouds became too heavy or like this. As Allah said, they become heavy with their burden and they drop forth particles or pieces of that cloud to rain. Already described, already explained in the Quran over 1400 years ago. Whether scientists discovered in the 18th century, 17th century, whatever, it was already explained in detail in the Quran. All of this explained in detail in the Quran. And then in the creation of mankind, Allah says, and indeed we created man out of a piece of clay, from earth, from pure earth. Thereafter we made him or his offspring from the mixed drops of male and female discharge. And Allah said he placed it in a womb well protected, in a well protected place, in the womb of a woman. Then he made that a clot of blood. And then he made that clot of blood a little small lump of flesh that clings, a thing that clings to the wall of the womb, of the uterus as we say now. And then we made that little lump of flesh bones, or we put bones inside, and then we clothed those bones with flesh. And then we brought forth another creation, meaning the baby that comes out of the womb. Again, 1400 years ago, over 1400 years ago, before they could place a camera inside of the womb of a woman as they do now, and show you the stages of a child. And now scientists look at this verse, and they compare it to what they see in those uh, cameras that they place, and is the same exact description of a child being formed in the womb of a woman. Over 1400 years ago, before science understood the likes of these matters, Allah in the, in the Quran calls that thing a thing that clings. It hangs on to the uterus, the uterus, the side of the uterus. Over 1400 years ago. Again, there is no way that Prophet Muhammad wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, could have come upon this knowledge except by revelation from the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is not possible. And then we mention, after that, the verse from the Quran, where Allah says, does man believe he will be left to go unchecked, meaning he will not be held accountable for what he does in the earth. Was he not a drop of sperm? So look at your humble beginnings. A drop of sperm, and, and the creator brought you from that stage and that state to the strength and and stability that we see you in before us today. So after all of that, does a person not believe that they will be held accountable for that which they do? And then another verse where our creator mentions with regards to the creation of mankind, he says, O mankind, have fear of your Lord who created you from a single soul, meaning from Adam, and created from him his mate, meaning Eve or Hawa, and spread from these two many men and women. So fear Allah whom you demand your mutual rights, who you take your rights from with regards to your family members and the likes of these matters, indeed God is ever watching over you. In this particular verse, there is something that we should examine quickly. And what we should examine is that first that we understand that all of these peoples, wherever they may be in the earth, that all of them started from common parentage. All of them started from common parentage. All of them started from a male and a female. As this is what the, you know, the multitudes of people have come from, a male and a female. So the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah, is establishing for us in this particular verse to remember that Lord who created you from that male and female and remember that he is ever watching over you. Now we mentioned earlier, what we discussed earlier, with regards to what was the purpose of creation. What is the purpose of creation? We mentioned our Lord said that he did not create this in jest. He did not create these heavens and the earth in play. Rather, there is a designed purpose for this creation. Our creator says clearly in the Quran, and I did not create the human being nor the jinn except for my worship. 